plants are multicellular, eukaryotic living things that we have known for millions of years and that continue to exist today. No one can deny that it serves various purposes regarding our health, food production, and other valuable materials for everyday living. It even provides many benefits to fish and invertebrates. However, if you're one of those few who love being surrounded by plants while keeping an aquarium, it might be pretty challenging to always include these green pigmented living organisms inside your tank as they can be torn apart by some fish. That's why in today's video, let me help you choose among the 15 best planted aquarium fish to add to your biodiverse and colorful planted freshwater tank. Stay with us throughout this video to note the most important statistics of each fish. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash the notification bell to have a daily update on the fish keeping industry. With so many species of live plants available in the aquarium hobby, a beautiful array of beginner, intermediate, and expert level options allows for unique ecosystems to enter the home. Before we get into the 15 planted aquarium fish, here are some of the things you should know about your plants when considering them inside the tank. First, adding live plants to the freshwater aquarium improves water quality. Aquarium plants are natural biofilters and perform photosynthesis, which converts the carbon dioxide produced by the tank's inhabitants into usable oxygen. And if you hate algae in your aquarium, adding plants can compete with it because they act as a form of natural algae control. Plants can use the available ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate, and phosphate in the aquarium that would otherwise need to be converted by beneficial bacteria or exported through water changes. Plants perform photosynthesis to grow. This is when carbon dioxide and water are converted into food or glucose and oxygen when light is available. This benefits fish and invertebrates because they rely on dissolved oxygen in the water column to breathe. Second, you should know that when setting up a newly planted tank, many experienced hobbyists opt to add plants as soon as possible to create the phenomenon known as a ghost cycle. It's when the nitrogen cycle happens in the aquarium without being detectable. This occurs when available ammonia and nitrite levels are used and converted so quickly that water parameter tests fail to identify a typical tank cycle with extreme fluctuations. Ghost cycling an aquarium can be challenging because gauging how many plants are needed to keep ammonia and nitrate levels at a minimum before water parameters become toxic. In addition, live plants also need to be fed nutrients during this time for them to keep growing. The third is knowing that many of the freshwater fish available in the aquarium hobby originate from densely planted rivers and lakes. These fish rely on these ecosystems for food, protection, and breeding. Though most aquarium fish have been bred in captivity, their instinct to rely on live plants have not been bred out. Fourth, aquascaping must be new to your ears. But did you know that aquascaping uses substrate, rocks, driftwood, live plants, and other aquarium decorations for practical and aesthetic purposes? This can mean having a few brightly colored structures here and there or recreating the natural environment of the fish with a variety of endemic species. These natural tools are used to recreate mini ecosystems inside these systems or cultivate rare species in bonsai tree formations. Lastly, live plants bring in a plethora of microflora and fauna. Plants are home to many algae and invertebrates, such as copepods, which make up the bottom of the food web. Many aquarium fish are omnivores and rely on plants for a balanced diet. This can cause some fish, like goldfish, to munch on leaves and uproot plants. If given the proper diet, most fish will leave wanted live plants alone. Now that you know some basic knowledge when adding plants to your aquarium, it's time to unravel the 15 planted aquarium fish you can start keeping for tanks of all sizes. Make sure to get your notepads because we'll start with the first one. The Cory Catfish these schooling fish excel in a planted aquarium where they can scuttle their way across the sand substrate, eating the chitras and other leftover food. While quarries are peaceful fish that like to explore, they can also be shy. During these times, you may see your foreground plants moving as your fish stay in the coverage of the vegetation. Number 2 on our list is the simple colored neon tetra. Neon tetras are beginner fish, a staple of the freshwater aquarium hobby. Something about their simple colors against a dense backdrop of dark green 
has won the hearts of aquarium keepers at all levels, bringing additional color to the planted aquarium without any worry that these schooling fish will eat or disrupt the plants. While considered a minor and skittish fish, large neon tetra school will happily and boldly swim in front of an exceptional aquascape. Another tetra you should consider is the cardinal tetra. This fish is nearly identical to neon tetras but requires slightly more preferred water conditions, making them especially favorable for planted aquariums with more excellent stability and water quality. Cardinal tetras are usually preferred over neon tetras due to their bright colorations and slightly stockier build. The fourth spot goes for the beautiful Harley Quinn Raspera. Despite its simple coloration and unique body shape, the peaceful Harley Quinn Raspera isn't seen in many aquariums. However, Harley Quinn Rasperas do just as well in planted aquariums as they do in regular setups and can bring an accent of color to other more colorful featured fish. You could never go cold in having chili raspera in your tank. Chili rasperas, also known as mosquito rasperas, are one of the smallest fish in the aquarium and one of the most expensive. These fish are prevalent for a nano-planted aquascape but relatively difficult to keep due to their size and need for more ideal water parameters. They are also very prone to jumping out of the aquarium, making a hood or other cover crucial for survival. Sixth spot that you better include is the betta fish. For a long time, betta fish have been wrongly kept in small bowls of uncycled water without filtration. But betta fish come from heavily planted ecosystems where they mingle in the vegetation. These fish are another excellent nano option for small planted tanks, bringing intense color to a small space. However, betta fish are aggressive fish of their kind and those that look like them which means they are limited in tank mates. Bright and plain as the clouds is our seventh fish named White Cloud Minnows. These schooling fish love to swim at the top of the community fish tanks and dart under cover of floating aquarium plants. White Cloud Minnows can bring a unique experience to the freshwater planted aquarium due to being a cold water species. This can open up many different plant options to hobbyists who might be tired of keeping the typical tropical species. Another fish that might be in your endgame is the Endler's Live Bearer. Endler's Live Bearers are considered to be glorified guppies. Closely related, these two fish have almost the exact care requirements. Endler's Live Bearers are deemed to have more interesting shapes and patterns that can quickly fill a planted aquascape. Keep in mind their rapid reproductive rates. Ninth on our list is the Sweet Cherry Barbs. These bright orange fish aren't necessarily challenging to keep, but they prefer having a natural setup with stable water conditions. Even in the planted aquarium, cherry barbs can be shy, so it's essential to keep them in appropriately sized schools. They are very peaceful and significant additions to community tanks. The 10th spot goes for the Rummy Nose Tetra. Also known by its scientific name, Hemigramus rhodostomus, the Rominos Tetra is a peaceful fish that can bring tons of activity to the middle and top layers of the aquarium. These fish are simple in coloration but adored for their signature red bodies. While a smaller fish, Rominoses can be a great addition to a tank with more prominent, slower moving species. Siamese Algae Eater, as our 11th fish, is another perfect fish to add. Siamese Algae Eaters are a widely available and popular addition to the planted freshwater aquarium. However, they can grow to enormous sizes and need to be kept in groups, making them more demanding than some other fish on this list. Despite their tank size requirements, Siamese algae eaters are very efficient at safely removing algae from aquarium plants, including the dreaded blackbeard species. Black is elegant and so is our 12th fish named Black Neon Tetra. The Black Neon Tetra is a less popular type of schooling fish due to the popular demand for Neon Tetra. However, a school of black neon tetras can create a beautiful contrast with other fish in the aquarium against a dark green backdrop. In general, black neon tetras are a little easier to breed than neon tetras. Awesome, right? Want to make your tank look ethereal? Try adding the 13th fish on our list, the Celestial Pearl Daino. Celestial Pearl Danios are beautiful fish that bring a very natural addition to the freshwater aquarium with their trout-like appearance. These schooling fish are tiny, tend to be shy, and should always be kept in groups. 
so you should set up tanks keeping the Celestial Pearl Daino in mind. They will need plenty of plants and driftwood to feel comfortable at all times. Going to our 14th fish, meet the Dwarf Cichlids. Dwarf Cichlids make the perfect feature fish for a planted aquarium. These fish bring incredible colors to the aquarium that slight fish lack. Species of Dwarf Cichlid are prevalent among hobbyists looking to breed freshwater fish as they exhibit unique spawning characteristics and readily breed once comfortable. And last but not least is the Autosynclus fish. These smaller fish are small, friendly, incredibly efficient at cleaning algae, and perfect schooling fish for planted aquariums. However, autos rely on the natural algae already available in the aquarium to survive and should only be kept in mature setups. These fish are also difficult to breed in captivity, which means that almost all individuals available in the aquarium hobby are wild caught and can make the transition from the wild to the home aquarium difficult. But suppose you're not a fan of some of the fish mentioned on the list. In that case, you can try out discus fish, dwarf gouramis like the honey gourami, freshwater shrimp, and algae-eating snails like nerites that can make great additions to your tank. Adding plants in the aquarium might be too much for your eyes to see. Still, the addition of live plants make the overall stability and living conditions of your tank system easier to maintain. On the other hand, planted tanks can comfortably fit more fish than an unplanted tank depending on how many plants are in the aquarium. But be reminded that the number of plants must match the tank's bioload and that planted tanks should always be well stocked. Many hobbyists need to dose fertilizers in addition to the waste created by fish to keep their plants satisfied. Fish can be eliminated from this equation and replaced by more fertilizers, but this cannot be easy to dose and is expensive in the long run. At the very least, most hobbyists stock their planted tanks with snails or shrimp to help control algae and replenish some nutrients. Maintaining plants alongside your fish in the aquarium will be easier if you educate yourself on how to make them work together. And here at Aquarium Store Depot, you can make that happen by watching our fish keeping videos. You can also visit our website at AquariumStoreDepot.com to dive into various blog posts that tackle everything you need to know about your fish. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see each other soon on the following topic.